So, can money buy happiness? I thought let's hear it from those who really have it. High net worth individuals as the adorable sponsor bank of this event would call them. Here's what one of them says. I have now reigned above 50 years. Riches and honors, power and pleasure have waited on my call, nor does any earthly blessing appear to have been wanting to my felicity. In this situation, I have diligently numbered the days of pure and genuine happiness, which have fallen into my lot. They amount to 14. Now, it would be an understatement to call Abd Araman, who wrote this, mega rich. He had any luxury you could think of. He lived in a city of palaces he had built because um, he could get any woman and every man he wanted, and his harem needed space. Nor did Abd Araman keep all riches for himself. He had a strong sense of giving long before Bill Gates found out how hard it is uh, to be happy as a robber baron. So he was a patron of the sciences, of poetry, and of the arts, and he made his country blossom. But happiness? Barely two weeks. So you see, the problem is all but new. Abd al-Rahman, the Caliph of Cordoba, died in 961, when Spain still was a Muslim country. What is new is that the issue affects so many people. We've seen tremendous economic growth in the last decades, and particularly in East Asia. Affluence has become widespread. Income disparities um, have widened. And money is more than ever on people's mind. But so are depressions. Depressive disorders, according uh, to the World Health Organizations, are now the number two in the hit list of, um, the, world, uh, of the most socially most devastating diseases. If you wonder what's number one, um, uh, that's still cardio cardiovascular diseases, but they're soon, soon to be overtaken. Depressions are the pest, really, of the beginning 20th century. And what's also new is that science has some answers to that puzzle. Since the 1950s, real incomes have risen by a factor of more than four in most European countries and in America. Has content with life risen as well? Not at all. Everywhere where it's been measured, the curve looks exactly like this, like this. So for example, the number of people satisfied with their lives remains stubbornly around 30% in Germany, and the uh, numbers elsewhere are similar. Why is that so? Because human nature is such. You see, happiness is an emotion. And emotions are signals. Happiness is a signal nature device to let us know of some potential benefit for us. It seduces us into behavior nature wants from us. We have to eat, we enjoy a meal, uh, nature wants us uh, to reproduce, sex is fun, etc., etc. Oh. And we also enjoy pay rises and fashion and gimmicks uh, money can buy. For if you look beyond basic needs, happiness is there also to signal us whatever promises to improve our situation. It's an early warning system for nice surprises. But precisely that is the glitch. Because once the promise has become reality, the nice surprise is gone. And so are the good feelings. Humans are terribly quick to adapt. In a classic study, people were asked before and after they learned that they had learned a million dollar in a lottery, 
about the satisfaction with life. So right after the fact, of course, the winners were walking on air. OK. Now, how long did the joy last? Not even six months. When the lucky winners were interviewed again then, they were precisely as happy or not as they were before. With today's brain science, we can even measure the, uh, the evasiveness of happiness due to adaptation in neural processes. And there's only one need to get back what was lost, namely more money, higher doses of fashion, of gimmicks. Does that remind you of an addiction? It should, because the neural mechanisms behind it are exactly the same. Sad circuits that signal pleasant surprises. Drugs sneak into that system chemically, but rolls of cash trigger them as well. So we are hooked on money the very same way any cocaine user is hooked on his or her stuff. And ultimately, that's the reason why we ever want more. And that's why the illusion that money can buy happiness is so persistent. Ask any junkie. He will tell you that A, the stuff is good for him, and B, that he or she can control it. Whereas in reality, controls him. Now, is a dream to become happier through money always a mirage? Not quite. If, you are, if your basic needs are not met, then money buys really value in terms of a proper roof for your hut, sending your kids to proper schools, um, paying a medical bill. And that, by the way, would be reason enough why we should give much more than we are used to. Our money is worthless for us, but it has real value for people who are beyond the poverty line. But there's another, more subtle effect of money. Even if it can't buy happiness, not for us, it can make us, under some circumstances, marginally more satisfied with our lives. Now, how that? You'll ask, now, isn't happiness and satisfaction the same thing? No, they are not, even though they get uh, frequently mixed up. You see, happiness is an emotion. It gets triggered without much thinking instantaneously. Satisfaction is a much more cognitive kind of thing. You review your emotions past, you think um, what your life is like, how it should be, etc., and so forth, and then you judge your life is okay or not. Happiness is a warm feeling, satisfaction is cold reasoning. So you can be happy but not very satisfied with your life, and that's a fact for most of us. Things are not bad when we experience them, but they could be better, of course. In which respect, we argue away the good moments we had. It's because our brains are programmed, are biased towards negative emotions. And money, indeed, can help us to be a bit less biased, too. But only if you are well off, for satisfaction is about comparing. And that's what social psychology shows. People are marginally more satisfied the richer they get as compared to their peers. But they don't feel better. They are not happier. And alas, there's more to it. First, any gains, in, even in satisfaction, become ridiculously small the more money you have. There's a law of diminishing returns. Second, at the moment where everybody gets more, the effect completely evaporates because it's about comparing. And third, is it worth it? To spend the money, to spend a life running after money, just to make your brain delude you a little less on how happy you really are, is a bit disproportionate, isn't it? It reminds me of a people who builds a rocket and flies to the moon only to see that it's really there. You have one minute. Your quest for money comes at a price, a huge price, and it's you who pay it. It makes you spend endless hours in office, makes you do plenty of things you really don't want to do were it not for the money. And worst of all, it corrodes all too often what you really draw our happiness from, namely human relationships. 
And recent empirical findings show very impressively not having money but wanting money severely abates both happiness and satisfaction. On the other hand, the most content people are the ones who put a healthy lifestyle, a good work-life balance, and most of all, their fellow man before their ambition. And the last study to show this tracked 10,000 people for over 15 years. So, not money in itself, but the chase after money is toxic. For you, for your fellow man, and for the planet. It makes you forget what life is really about. To think that money will make you happy is a delusion. Get over it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan.